All right, everyone, let's get started with how to make my favorite washcloth, dishcloth. Um, this is my favorite size, what it works best for me. Some people like these a little bit larger, smaller. The best thing about this is you can customize it to be whatever length that you would like. Uh, what you will need is you will need a crochet hook. I like the fabric that I create when I use a size H, um, which is a five millimeter. Um, I, you will also need some locking stitch markers. Those are optional. You could use a, a spare piece of yarn if you wanted to. And then you will need a tapestry needle. I keep mine in these little wine corks just because they're easy to find and I don't lose them as often. And then you'll need a scissors as well. For some dimensions that we have here, this is, let's see, about almost seven inches by, let's see, seven inches. So it's almost a perfect square um, with this design. I liked the finished edges to this. Um, so let's get started. First, what you'll need is you will need some yarn. So I have here some Lily's Sugar and Cream. I got this on sale at Joann's for some dimensions. This is a size four, as you can see here. They do recommend a five millimeter, which I also agree with. Um, you can see the other, other label instructions there. I'm not gonna read them all. So you know this is Garden Party, that's the color. Um, and I believe this is 100% cotton. With these, I can usually get for sure two, sometimes three or more, I can't quite remember. But for sure you get two. Um, and cotton works really good because it absorbs water. It's great for a washcloth, dishcloth. You could use other, um, other yarns and fabrics. That's fine. Uh, but this is just what I prefer. It lasts longer. It is a little bit rougher on the hands, the fingers, because of the 100% cotton. It's a, kitchen cotton is how I describe it, uh, how a lot of people describe it. So yeah, we will get started with how to cast on. All right, everyone, to get started, you're going to need to do what you do with most uh, crochet or, or knit projects. You're going to need to start with a slip knot. Um, there's several different ways to do this. I have my preferred method. Feel whatever uses best for you. If you don't like my method, that's fine. Not offended. Feel free to just look up your favorite method and use that. So what we have here is our ball of yarn. The yarn that comes off, you, know, you wanna give yourself a little room to work. The yarn that's still connected to the ball, this is called your working yarn. The yarn that's left over, this is your tail. So you wanna give yourself a little bit of a tail. Um, and when you first do this, make sure you give yourself kind of a big loop. You pinch the two together. So now you have a big loop at the top. Pinch them together. And what I do is I twist once, I twist twice, then you reach through that loop and grab the working yarn. Just grab it. Now that you've grabbed the working yarn, let go and pull the two strands. What this does, creates this nice little slip knot. So you can tighten this, you can loosen this as much as you need. So then what you do is you put it on your hook. And that is, and then you tighten it up, that is how you create your slip knot. So that is the first step. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold the yarn um, in your non-dominant hand and you're gonna hold the hook in your dominant hand. And so I'm right-handed, so I hold the hook in my right hand. There's several different ways to do this. There is no one right way to hold the hook or to what's called tension your yarn. Uh, and so what I do to tension my yarn is we're actually gonna throw the ball off the table because we don't need it anymore where you have the yarn, it's all connected. I started with knitting, so I hold it the same way that I knit. So this is how I tension my yarn. It gives me good control over the yarn. Some people just have two fingers like this. Some people will wrap around a couple different ways. Um, whatever feels comfortable to you. There is no right or wrong way to do this. It's what becomes muscle memory. So this is the way that I do it. So I have it just like I do with my knit. Then what I do is you're gonna wanna chain a certain number of stitches. So we never count the loop that's already on our hook. We're just counting the ones that are off of our hook. So right now we don't have any chained. So to chain, just chain one, I grip the little slip knot, then you take your yarn, you took your hook and you yarn over, and you just bring it through the loop that's right there. 
The trick here is not to hold your yarn too tight. You hold it too tight and it's hard to get your hook through. So right now we have one stitch that's on our hook and you can kind of see it makes this little V right there. You see that V, the two, the two lines, one right there, one right there. That's our little V. That's how you count is by the number of V's that are on. So we have one. So we are going to chain 24. So again, you grab the yarn with your hook and you, I twist it and I bring it right through. Loosen up a little bit so you have enough room to get through. Now there's two V's. You see the V's? One, two. It's hard to point. One, two. Those are your two V's. So now we need to do 22 more. So this is three. Four, five, and as you do this, you will get faster. When you first start out, six, seven, you know, it, it takes a little while, it takes some muscle memory. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. What I'm doing is I'm moving my hand and I'm grabbing more yarn to bring it over. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. So there we go, now we have 24. Then what you're gonna do is you're going to single crochet in the third loop. So this is the first one, one, two, three. You're gonna do it in the third loop. You're gonna single crochet. So right where there is this V right here, that's where you're gonna put the head of your crochet hook. You're gonna go through, grab the yarn, and bring it back. So I'll show you. So take it right into the third one right here, put it through. So now it's through that V. You're gonna grab the yarn, bring it back through the V. Now you have two loops. And what you do is you grab the arm one more time and bring it through both loops. That is a single crochet. You're going to do that every time. So we'll show you again. So you see where it's gone through. You don't need to do that one. And the nice thing about this is if you pull the yarn a little bit, it'll actually almost point to the next V. So this top, this top part of your V that you just went through is going to point to the next one. So that's where you can always tell where you're at. So you're going to do the same thing. Go back through, grab the yarn. You have two loops, yarn over, that's what this is called when you grab it with your hook, and bring it through both. Very nice, so you've done this twice. So you can read the top of it. There's one V right there, two Vs, so the pink, and then the really pale pink, the white. So one, two. You've done two so far. So you go all the way down. So through the V, grab it, bring it back through, yarn over, bring it through both loops. So that is what you do all the way down. Go all the way down. And I will meet you here at the end. All right, welcome back. So we've gotten almost all the way down. You can see our, our work right here. So we have one last stitch to go through before you get to our, our tail. So same thing, go right through it grab the yarn, bring it back through, and do your single crochet. You've now gotten to the end. So this is the part where if most people get confused, it's this section right here. And so what I like to do is first you always turn your work. There you go. So you're always working from right to left. Um, I'm right-handed, so that's the way I always work. And that's, you can see right where you did your last your last um, stitch right there. So to start the new row, the way this pattern works is you do one row of single crochets, then you do another row of single crochets, and then you do a row of double crochets. So we have one more row of singles to do. So to start your new row, for a single crochet, I always chain one at the ends. For double crochets, I chain two. So that's just to give us enough height for the next row. So you don't want to start right here, otherwise it'll look a little lopsided. So you chain one, just yarn over and bring it through your current loop. There you go. Now you're ready to start the new row. What I like to do here though, is you can see where your last stitch was on the row right before. What you're gonna do 
is you're going to take one of your locking stitch markers and you're going to put it right through that last stitch that you did just so you can tell where your last stitch was so you don't get it confused with that um, chain one. That's where people get lopsided with their work is they can sometimes get a little confused about where one row ended and where the the chain for the new row started. So I put a locking stitch marker there and we'll do it on the other side too. That way you never get confused on where you're at. So to get started, we'll do the same thing we did. So right where we put our stitch marker, we're just gonna go right through there. And you can wait till you've done this if it makes it easier. You know, it, it's all up to you. And we're gonna do the single crochet, just like we did for the row before. So you can see where your rows are. If you turn it sideways, you can see the V's on top. You're going to go right through both legs. So right through both legs of that V. You see the V on top right here? Move my thumb. Right here is the V. You're going to go through both legs of the V. So turn it sideways. And you're going to go through both legs. There's a little opening right here. See, you can pull it apart. You see the little opening right there? kind of looks like a triangle. Oh, more like a triangle now. You go through both legs of that V. So go through here. Yarn over. Bring it back through. Went through both legs. Now I have two loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and bring them through both loops. Same thing. Here's the hole right here. Stretch it out so you can see it. Underneath both legs of the V. I'm going to go through both of them, yarn over, bring it back through. Now I have two loops on my hook, yarn over, bring it through both. And you do that all the way down. Eventually you'll get into a really good rhythm and this will feel like second nature. It's normal for it to feel a little awkward until you get used to the body movements, until your hands get used to having the yarn and the hook in your finger. Um, until you get used to what tension works for you. That's okay. That's totally normal. But you're just going to go through all the way down. And if you wanted to count to see, like maybe you lost track, because right now we're doing 22 single crochets. So remember, we skipped the first two after we got done. So if you wanted to count, turn it sideways and count your Vs. So we finished one right here that light pink, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right, where the stitch marker is. So you're at 10, so we should have 12 more to go. That's how you can always tell, though. You can always turn it sideways and count the V's on top. So we should have 12 more to go. 1, 2, Three. Don't mind my counting. We're just going to do this for the first row. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Sorry, the stitch mark is making noise. Seven. Eight. Nine. 11, 12, and looks like I miscounted somewhere because this is 13, and 14. So I miscounted somewhere. Not quite sure how I did that, but I did. <laughs> so we've reached the other end. It's not like we do it every time when you reach the end. This is how you don't get lopsided. Every time you reach the end, you turn your work. So again, we're going right to left. And now we've did two rows of single crochets. So now we're going to do a row of doubles. So to do a row of doubles, it has more height than the single crochets. So instead of chaining one like you did last time, this time you're going to chain two. One, two. You've chained two. Then you're going to go right in the spot where you chained. You see the hole right there? Right where you chained, you're going to go in. And you're going to do a double crochet. So this time, instead of putting your hook through right away, what you're going to do is you're going to wrap the yarn around your hook. So that's how you have it set up. 
So again, I'll show you. Wrap the yarn. I go from right towards the left. So in my right hand, I'm going towards the left, going underneath, grabbing the yarn. And what you're going to do is you're going to put your hook right through this space right here. See where my thumbs are at? That space. You're going through both uh, legs of the V. So go through and yarn, grab it, the loop again just like you did last time and bring it through. But now you'll see you'll have three loops on your hook. So what you do is you grab the yarn and you only go through two. So go through the first two. One, two. Now I still have two loops on my hook, so I'm going to do it again. I'm going to grab the yarn and go through both loops. This is a double crochet. You can see how it's taller than the single crochets. And you're going to do that all the way down. So right here, go through both legs of the V. The V's on top. Go through both legs of that. So start by yarning over. Going through both legs. Grabbing the yarn. Bring it back through. Three loops on your hook. Yarn over. Bring it through two. Yarn over. Bring it through two. And that's what you'll do all the way down. And then you'll have a row of doubles, and then you'll do singles, two rows of singles, one row of doubles. Two rows of singles, one row of doubles. And so, that's what you do. When you're getting ready to do a single row, you do a chain one. When you're getting ready to do a row of doubles, you do a chain two. And I love this because of the fabric it creates. It's my favorite fabric for dishcloths. It might not be yours. That's totally fine. Experiment with it. What do you like? Do you like three rows of singles and one row of doubles? Do you like all doubles? There's no wrong answer. I just took a, a while to figure out what was my favorite fabric for dishcloths. And I started by imitating other people, and then I started playing around and found the one that I liked the most. And this might be somebody's somebody's pattern. I don't know. I just found it through experimentation, which was fun because um, it gives you a little more breathing room with the doubles than it does the singles, but it still creates a nice dense fabric. And so you'll do that all the way down. And if we look at our first dishcloth here, you can kind of see right here, there's the two rows of doubles. And then here's, here's the two rows of singles, excuse me, then a row of doubles, two rows of singles, a row of doubles two rows of singles, one row of doubles. Two rows of singles, one row of doubles. So what you'll end up doing is you'll have six doubles. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we started down here, you end up having six sets of doubles, and then you'll finish with two rows of singles, and then you'll do the border around the edge. And I'll show you how to do the border next. So you do everything I did, you'll just keep repeating it. And if you want this to be bigger, you start with more, more chains and your, your foundation chain. If you want it to be longer, you keep going. You don't have to stop when I stop. This is just how I like my dishcloths. Just big enough for my hand. That's how I, some people like them a lot bigger. But that, that's up to each of you. So again, my pattern is start with the singles, two rows of singles, one double. Two rows of singles, one double. Two rows of singles, one double. Two rows, one double. Two rows of singles, one double. Two rows of singles, one double. Ending with two rows of singles. And that's when you start your border. And so what I'll do is I'll keep working on this until I get to the point where I need to do my border. And I'll meet you back here. So I'll see you soon. Hello everyone. So we meet back up just like I said we would. You should have your finished work right here. You should have six double crochets interspersed with two rows of singles. So you start with our two rows of singles, then a double, two rows of singles, then a double. So two, one, two, one, two, one, until you have six rows of doubles and you finish with two rows of singles at the top. Once you get to the very top, you do is you just chain one. So I've already done that. So I've chained one. And then we have this hole that we're going to be working into here. So for each of our corner spots for our border, which we're about to start, um, what we do is it's pretty simple. We go into the corner three times with a single crochet, and then we do a single crochet all the way down the side till we get to the next corner, three single crochets in the corner, and we keep going all around the sides. We'll go all around our whole washcloth twice. 
So what you do is you turn your work just like you always do. And now what you're going to do is you go into this corner once. So you just go right through, pull up a loop, and do a single crochet, go into that same spot, pull up a loop, single crochet, same spot, pull up a loop, single crochet. So you've done it three times, and now there's no clear spots on this side. So the side, there's not a clear space to you, you, that you go in through, just like when you were making the, the washcloth itself. And so what you'll do is you'll just go and pick up all along the edge. There's no rhyme or reason. I'll start just going in, just along the edge, and doing single crochets all the way through. And this is what you'll do. You just find the spaces that work. Um, try and not be too close together because that'll make it lopsided or too far apart. That'll also make it a little wavy. Just try and naturally find a rhythm that works and you're going to start creating this beautiful border. It just gives it a really nice finished look. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this one side together and we'll get to the next corner and I'll show you what that looks like. And then we'll come back together when we get to the second round to show you what that looks like. So still just doing a single crochet all the way down. Go through, pull up a loop, go through two. Pull up a loop, go through two. All the way until we hit our lovely corner. Which we are almost there. Through, pull up a loop, go through two, put your hook through, pull up a loop, go through two, through, pull up a loop. And so your corner, you just kind of make it because this is where our foundation chain is. So I'm going to go through this tiny little hole right there and we're going to make that our corner. So again, with all, whenever you hit a corner, you're going to go through three times with a single crochet. So we did it three times. Now you Turn your work a little bit and you do this side. So you're going to do that for all of them. You're going to follow along all the sides. Go through three in this corner. And when you hit this corner, you're actually just going to weave in, weave in your tail. And so I'll show you how to do that. We'll just, well, you know, we'll just follow it together. If you don't want to watch this, you can always skip ahead. I'll try and remember to put times in the video so you know when you can just skip ahead if you would like to do that. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just going through here, doing a single crochet. Going through here, single crochet. Just going to do this all the way around. Go through. Now you pull the loop. Now you have two loops on your hook. Go through both. And I'm, I'm constantly retensioning with my left hand. I don't even think about it anymore to get the tension that I like. You're not going to want something that's too tight that you can't even bring the hook through, but you don't want something too loose that makes it look all wobbly. Just find the tension that you like working with. Whatever that, that happens to be. I'm getting close to the corner. And like I said, you can do this really with any yarn if you want. Cotton yarn does work the best. And sometimes you'll find that maybe your yarn says it was a four weight, but it's really more like a three weight. Then you might need to do a couple more rows. The beauty about this is you can really make it as wide or as short as you want, whatever your style is. That's how I found this, is I just wanted to find my own style. So we're about to hit the corner. So this is actually where we first cast on. This is, this is the yarn that we first cast on with. And so here's our corner. So we're going to go in the corner and we're going to start to catch this yarn so we don't have to weave it in later. So we just leave it on the top, go through underneath with our hook. You see that we went underneath, we're just leaving this yarn on the top. We're just going to do what we always do, pull up, go through two. But what you're doing is you're trapping this yarn underneath your stitches so you don't have to weave it in later. I always do this whenever I can because I hate weaving in my ends when I'm done. So we went through three times and we're going to still lay this on the top as we go. And once we've done about half of it, if you have any left over, you can cut it. 
because it's not going anywhere. It's trapped under all your stitches. So you do the same thing you did with the other side. You're just leaving this extra yarn on top. You're going underneath. Grabbing the yarn, pull it back through. There you go, your single crochet. See, you're just leaving the yarn on top and going underneath like you would normally do, but you're just trapping that yarn in your stitch. And all it does is saves you time. So you won't, and you can you can kind of see it there, the purple, but nobody will really know. Um, and if anybody does, they should not be looking at your your materials that closely that they would notice, um, unless they want to say, "Oh, congratulations, that looks great." If they say anything else, then they don't deserve to look at your knitting. Uh, that's my my little opinion. Um, but yeah, that's that's all you do. So you're going to do this twice. You're going to go all the way through and you can already see it starts to look a little more clean adding the border and adding two rows makes it look really clean. Um, when you get back up to where you first started with your corner here, you're just going to do a slip stitch, which means you're going to put your hook through, grab it, pull it up, and then instead of going through both loops, you just bring your front loop through the back loop. That's a slip stitch. You can always look it up too. So you slip stitch to connect right here and then you just do the same thing. Single crochet again for round two. And then you end with the slip stitch and weaving it in. That, that's really it. I'm not going to show how to do the rest of that. You can always look up other videos. Um, I will show how this looks at the very end. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really all it is to it. And like I said, adjust this however you want. Make it wider, make it shorter, make it longer, make it smaller. You know, whatever you like in your washcloth. All right, everyone. So we're back here. So I've done the two rows of border. And you can see it. It just makes it look like a much more finished piece. I've gotten all the way back at the end. And so this, I will show you how to do a slip stitch. Um, so I finished my row. So this is my very last you know, single crochet and here's where I started. So to do a slip stitch, it's very simple. You put your hook through, yarn over, so now you have two loops. Instead of grabbing another loop, what you do is you take this first loop and bring it through the one that's already on your hook. So you just bring it through. That's a slip stitch. So again, I'll show it again. Put it back through, just reset it. So now you have the two loops. The one you pulled up is closer to the neck and the one further down. You take the one that's closer to the neck and just bring it through the other one. That is a slip stitch. And that is how you finish it. It makes it look very nice. And so that's how you always start a new row. Now what you would do is very simple. You take your scissors, give yourself a little bit of yarn, a couple inches, cut it from your working yarn. To finish your piece, you just take the leftover tail and you just bring it through. There you go. And all you have to do is weave in this end. So to weave in this end, you have your tapestry needle you um, put this on your tapestry needle, needle and then weave it through. There's no specific rhyme or reason. Um, you just do it a couple times so it looks secure and then you cut the leftover. Um, some people will tell you there's a more specific design. I don't. I just weave it through four or five times. It's good to go. None of my ends have ever come undone. I'm not worried about it. And you have a great looking washcloth. And so um, I love this. It's my favorite design. I just love the fabric that it creates. Um, it's dense enough with those single crochets, um, but it still lets enough water with the occasional double crochet, giving you the spaces. So it's what I really like, and the border around it makes it look really nicely finished. Um, so yeah, that's my version of my favorite washcloth. I hope this was helpful. Um, please consider, you know, commenting if you'd like to see any other tutorials. You know, I don't do a ton of these, but I enjoy enjoy the things I do. So if you ever want to see more. Feel free to add your comments down below, and I hope you all have a great, great day. Thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye.